In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have closed captions for all of your clicks within a click to reveal, but also ensure that the learners watch every single section of your click to reveal as well. Okay, so I'm working with a client who has some very specific needs, and this has been an extra challenge. What I thought I would do is I would share my process with you so that you can utilize this as well. The specific needs they have are is they need click to reveals, but for each click, they want to see all the closed captions. So not just the text on screen along with pictures or uh, little movies or whatever. They want full closed captions at the bottom, but they also don't want learners to be able to click another click to reveal until that particular click has finished all the narration. So we need to do a couple of things uh, a little bit differently than how I've done them in the past. Okay, so here's my project file that I'm working with right now. This is just a demo project, uh, not the actual project that I'm working on with my client. But it gives us a pretty good example of the type of slide that I would traditionally create a click to reveal. So these are just uh, shapes used as buttons right here. And, um, and I also have shapes used as buttons for my back and my next buttons here. And if we uh, open up the timeline, you can see a couple of things about these. So uh, anytime I'm writing advanced actions, whether it's for a single slide or a multi-slide situation like this case here, Labeling your objects is extremely important. So the previous button is called S02 for slide two previous, and all of these buttons up here are S02 underscore B for button 01, 02, 03, and 04. And then I have a continue button or a next button, if you will. And uh, it's set up to be not visible in output. Now, I've duplicated basically the background of these slides to represent one for each of the one to four buttons that's on slide number two. So the first thing I'll need to do is copy this content into the other slides. The reason for that is that if your client needs closed captions for each of the clicks in this click to reveal, you will need uh, an additional slide for each one of those because the only type of audio you can have closed captioning in Adobe Captivate is of course slide audio. Now I've already gone ahead and added the slide audio for these. And in addition, I've also already prepared the closed captions. So uh, here's an example, Alex, earlier you told a joke about my ethnic group here in the office. So that's gonna be the first click. Now. I'm going to select all of these objects here. And, uh, oh, before I do, let's just point out that each button has the rollover and the down states removed because I've added a custom state called clicked. And this is going to be what is shown when our learners click these buttons. And basically it's the same text as what's being narrated. So the idea here is that they're clicking these four steps to see an example of the things you might say to have such a conversation. Um, the thing to remember, of course, is that, uh, like I said already, uh, unique names for all of your objects are really important. So I will be copying all of these and pasting them onto the following slides. Each of these buttons simply jumps to the appropriate slide here. So let's copy this group of buttons here and we'll paste it onto slide number three, slide number four, and slide number five and six. Now, on slide number two, button one, for example, the action for it will be to jump to slide three. Now, if I'm on slide three, it's the very same button. It's just been duplicated. Uh, it obviously can't jump to the same slide that it's already on, so that becomes uh, the action of continue. In this case, I don't need them to press this button. They won't probably try to do it anyway, so I can simply uncheck that. And in, in this case here, button one on slide number three 
will simply have uh, will not actually be a button at all. And I can do the same thing for for each of these slides here. So again, um, this one has no action. So therefore, I'm just going to turn it off as a button. And for slide number five, we'll turn off uh, button three. And for slide number six, we'll turn off the final button so that it's not being used as a button at all. And again, I think it's, in, it's terribly important when you're about to write a bunch of advanced actions that will reference these objects and the variables associated with them, uh, you, you should take the time to properly relabel these objects here. So starting with uh, slide number three, I'm going to select slide zero two, and we're just going to change that to slide zero three and Captivate puts these extensions on the end when it when you duplicate objects like that. So I'll just spend a few minutes relabeling these objects for each of the slides that they're on. Okay, so I've relabeled all of the objects. So for example, the original one, slide 02 previous, slide 02 button 4, slide 02 button 3. And then similarly on slide three, they all start with S03. Slide four, they all start with S04. So now I'm good to go. I've got uniquely named objects for all of my slides here. Now, the first thing I need to do is to keep track of which slides my learners have been on. So to do that, we're going to store a value in a total of five variables here. So I'm gonna open up the variables window. You can get to that by clicking on the project drop down menu and selecting variables. I'm going to add new and I like to start my variables with an underscore so that they maintain unique names from any objects. But in this case here, we're just going to start them with S02 underscore visited. I'm going to select and copy all that text so that I can use the same structure for slide number three and slide number four and slide number five and slide number six. So I will be able to keep track of all the visits to all of these slides and then we'll know when this interaction is complete. So let's go ahead and close the variables window. Now each slide will need an on enter advanced action. So like I said before, uh, normally I would put my advanced actions on the click of these buttons and then keep track of what's been clicked before showing the continue button. But because of the whole closed caption thing, uh, we need to jump to each of these slides to reveal that stuff there. The more complicated uh, advanced action will be slides three through six. So I think I'll write one of those first before writing uh, the advanced action for slide number two. So let's click on slide number three so we can see the objects in question and our timeline. Down here at the bottom, you can see the slide duration, which will be useful in writing this advanced action as well. So I'm going to click on Project Advanced Actions and we'll give this a name. This will be slide 03 underscore enter. And this will be a conditional advanced action where we're checking the value of that variable we just created for slide two, slide zero two visited to see if it is equal to the literal value of zero. And it should be the first time you come to this slide. Uh, if it is, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign slide zero two visited with a literal value of one. So we're again, keeping track that we've been here before. And we can do that by checking the value of this variable. Now, if we want to make sure that no one can click away until all of this narration is finished, we're gonna to need to disable all of the interactive objects here. So I'm gonna select disable. Um, I'll do them in order as I see them here in this drop down. that's probably easier. Disable slide zero three button two. Disable slide zero three button three. And disable slide zero three button four. So that takes care of all the buttons. An interesting side note here is that slide zero three button zero one. Actually, I turned off 
being a button. So I can still disable it in my advanced action, but that'll be helpful when I'm writing the advanced action for slide two. The other thing I like to disable is that previous button. Because I've already updated the variable, I wanna make sure that my previous button is also disabled so that uh, we won't erroneously update this unless they've viewed the entire slide. So we'll prevent them from leaving this slide. And the next thing we need to do is uh, change the appearance of the first button because that's the slide that's associated with step number one. So we're going to change the state of slide zero three button one to clicked. And we're going to need to do this for all of the button ones on all of the slides here. So we're going to change the state of slide zero two button one to clicked because as far as the user is concerned, all of these buttons are really the same button. So slide zero four button one to clicked. I know I did these a little bit out of order here, but that's okay. It's going to happen so quickly you won't notice a time delay or anything like that. And uh, let's just type in button one. We're looking for slide six. So that's now clicked. Now, uh, while these are disabled, we want to ensure enough time goes by before we enable those buttons. So we're going to delay the next actions by the duration of the current slide. So I'm going to delay next action by the literal value of 4.3 seconds. And then now all I need to do is enable all my buttons again so that the learners can uh, go ahead and click something else and see what that's all about. So slide three, button one, enable slide three button two we've run out of lines here but you can use the add um, icon in the toolbar up here to add a few extra lines here so we're going to enable Okay, so we've enabled all our buttons again, and now someone can move on. But how do we know that we're finished? Well, we're going to need one additional tab where we check that information out. So let's go to the second tab here. This will also be a conditional advanced action, and we're going to check the value of all of our variables. So we'll see if the variable for slide zero two visited is equal to the literal value of one, that would mean that it's been clicked. And we'll copy and paste this a bunch of times so that we have uh, a line for each of those variables. And I'll just change the variables here to slide zero three visited, slide zero four visited, slide zero five visited and last but not least slide zero six visited so if we have visited all our slides we can show all of our continue buttons on all of these slides but first we need that same time delay so i'm going to go back to the first tab select this delay next actions by 4.3 seconds we're going to copy that and if they happen to be on slide number three, when they click the last button, we're going to use that same time delay before we show. And I put the word next in all of these here. So I can just very quickly, I'll copy and paste that a bunch of times and use that line over and over again and just make a small change there. 
So here we're slide three next, slide four next, slide five next, and slide six next. Okay, that's basically done. I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, and we can go ahead and close this window. While we're here, we can go to the Actions tab for slide number three, select the On Enter Action, select Execute Advanced Actions, and there's our first uh, advanced action that we've written. Let's go back to slide number two and make a modified version of that very same advanced action for slide number two. In, the, in slide number two, it's exactly the same as all the other slides, except we're not pressing one of these buttons. So they're going to stay in their unclicked state. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll go to project. We'll go to advanced actions. We'll select the existing advanced action we've created and press duplicate action. And this will create an exact copy of the first advanced action. I'm just going to give it a new action name. This will be for slide 02. And I'll just get rid of that four at the end there. And I realized in the original advanced action, I was using the wrong variable, but in this case, it's the right variable. So we'll, we'll change slide 03, enter in a moment. Um, these videos are not always perfect because sometimes I make mistakes. But here's what we need to change for the first slide two uh, item. So we'll update our objects to be associated with the objects that are on slide number two. And we'll make sure that all of these are disabled just like they were before. We're not going to change the state of anything. So I can press the or click on the first of these change state actions, hold down my shift key and select the last one to select them all. And I can just remove those uh, like so. The duration of the slide is a little longer. So we're going to change that 4.3 seconds to 8.1. And we're now going to enable all of our slide two buttons so that someone can click the next item in that click to reveal or navigate away from this page if necessary. And don't forget that previous button. Remember the next button is hidden right now. Uh, so you don't need to worry about um, disabling or enabling that. So again, we need the uh, time delay for the uh, uh, disabled buttons there. So we can copy this 8.1 second delay next action command, and we can paste it into this one here as well. And everything else remains the same on the second tab. So I can update that action, click OK, and we can go ahead and close. Let's go back to slide three and fix my mistake there. Um, oh, and before I leave here, let's make sure our execute advanced action on enter is set for slide two enter there. So back to three, click on the little folder icon here, and I'm just going to fix the variables here. So I should have been working with the variable for slide zero three. So we'll choose that and choose that here. I don't know why I instinctively went to two, but that's good now. We'll update that action, click OK, and close. So I need to do three more advanced actions, one for slide four, one for slide five, and one for slide six. So I'll go ahead and create the new advanced action for slide four. We'll click on Project, Advanced Actions. We'll select slide three, Enter, because that will be sort of our template for all the remaining slides moving forward. We'll duplicate that action. Give it a new name. And now we just need to update which uh, variables that we're working with and objects that we're working with. So we're working with anything related to slide four. So the variable that we're going to work with is slide four visited we'll update 
slide four visited with a value of one. And we are going to disable the slide four button one object, slide four button two object, slide four button three object, slide four button four object, and the slide four previous button object. We're going to change the state of all the button twos on all of the slides. So I'll select this and type in B02 and show that to be clicked. B02, slide three, clicked. B02, slide four, clicked. B02, slide five, clicked. B02, slide six, clicked. Uh, 3.5 seconds is our new duration. So we'll just update the de uh, delay next action command here with that. And now we'll enable all of our buttons on this slide. So again, slide zero four, button one, slide zero four, button two, slide zero four, button three, slide zero four, button four, and slide zero four, previous. Uh, let me copy this uh, delay next actions by, go over to uh, the second tab here and we'll paste it right over top of our previous delay next actions command so that it has the right time. And we can update this action Click OK and close. And now I need to do exactly what I just did for slide number five and slide number six. I'll fast forward through this part, but uh, you'll know, of course, when I'm done because I'll start speaking again. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Preview HTML5 in Browser. So in order for this uh, interaction to satisfy my client's needs, uh, there's basically three things I need to make sure are working here when I test this out. Number one, uh, if I try to click on another object before uh, the first click in the click to reveal happens, uh, it should not go to that other item. It should finish playing the narration for that slide. Second, we need to make sure the closed caption works for all of the individual clicks within the click to reveal. And finally, we don't see the continue or the next button until all four buttons have been clicked. Okay, so we've arrived on the uh, beginning slide here. We'll start with that. Here is an example of using the four steps to resolve workplace harassment or discrimination. Click on each of the buttons to hear an example of each step. So we got our closed captions, uh, you know, right on the first slide, slide number two. And I'm going to start by testing out the first button here. And as soon as I press this, I'm going to try pressing the second button to see if I'm able to jump to that slide uh, before this finishes. Alex, earlier you told a joke about my ethnic group here in the office. I am offended by jokes like this because it's demeaning to me. So only once the initial narration is complete am I able to press the second button. Let's try the third button and I'll try pressing the fourth button again right away. I would appreciate it if you would stop telling jokes that make fun of people's race. So like before, yeah, it totally works there. And of course, we're getting our closed caption on each one of the clicks within this clicks to reveal. If this continues, I will have to speak to our manager or HR about it. And of course, the continue button doesn't show up until the narration for that final click within the click to reveal is actually complete. And of course, now we can continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.